and uh, then uh, let, let him uh, take it away here, Lee. <clears throat> if anybody's never seen it, this is a Jitsi screen. Uh, it is uh, a lot simpler than Zoom. One of the things I like about Jitsi, I hate about Zoom, when you share a screen in Zoom, it moves the home window to wherever that screen is. And if you've got eight or 10 desktops, it's a pain in the butt to find it when you want to find it again. But anyway, let's start from the top. Everybody see the slides here? Yes. Okay. I see it. Jitsi from Wikipedia. Jitsi is a collection of free and open source multi-platform voice video conferencing and instant messaging applications for the web, Windows, Linux, Mac, OS, iOS, and Android. The Jitsi project began with Jitsi Desktop. With the growth of WebRTC, the project team focus shifted to video bridge for multi-party video call, calling, and later added Meet, which was a full, which is a full video conferencing application for the web, Android, iOS clients. And again, that's the opening opening uh, section from Wikipedia. We've been playing with it for a while. The Jitsi site, Jitsi.org. There is a public meeting site that Jitsi hosts. Anybody can use it. Uh, you can uh, launch a meeting with any name at any point in time. Although the recommendation is as soon as you launch it, give it a password so nobody can Jitsi bomb you like they do on, uh, on Zoom. Back in March, we built a, G a VPS here, which I'll talk about in a bit. And it has been hosting Jitsi Unstable. Uh, at the time, we wanted to, I wanted to stay ahead of the stable version because we were looking for new features as they came out. Some of them materialized, some of them didn't. Primarily, the UI support for Firefox has never made it mainstream. Uh, if you want to host a Jitsi meeting, do it from on Chromium because the actual UI interface for the presenter is uh, a lot more capable than Firefox. It used to be that fits, uh, Firefox would cause performance issues with a Jitsi conference on any platform. We've had reports of it, but that seems to have uh, quieted down a bit over the last two or three months as the versions matured. But the presenter's UI on Jitsi is still uh, not as polished on Firefox. It's better on Chromium. And tonight we're going to be playing with jitsi.omnitech.net, which is a uh, Docker uh, instance we'll build here in a little bit. And I will actually do it live, assuming nothing breaks. There are at least six components to a basic Jitsi uh, installation. The Jitsi Meet app, open source web RTC. Video Bridge, XMPP, WebRTC Server, Jibri, which is tools for recording and or streaming. Jugasi is the Jitsi gateway to SIP. Jitsi Desktop, which is a desktop app that lets you use it in point-to-point -point video calls and also conferencing, chat, desktop sharing, file transfer. And the Jaikopo, which I've never played with, managing multi sessions, multi, multi managing media sessions between different users. And there also are a few more. Supported platforms, primarily Debian slash Ubuntu. Uh, and again, we'll talk about Docker here in a minute, but since source is available, you can roll your own at any point in time. The first Jitsi server we built back in March, I set up with Nginx. We had problems getting ProCity Pro running, which is the authentication engine. So one of our uh, St. Louis chaps jumped in to figure it out and he actually switched it to Apache because he wasn't that uh, Nginx config was a little wonky at the time. And that's actually what I put up for a, a demo link this, uh, this afternoon. You know, which is the 
screen you're seeing right here. This is nix.omnitech.net. And a few of you are also logged in there besides me. And we'll see more about that later. And Docker is what we're going to build. Two ways you can get it. There is a stable source package on jitsi slash releases slash latest. Or you can clone it. Which is what I'm going to do here. So there's a question. Uh, does Is the, uh, the clone the unstable version? Uh, no, the clone is a stable version. Uh, that's a good question. I follow unstable on Nix, but I haven't played with the Docker version long enough to know for sure. Lee, this is Stan. Yes, question. Is the, the public Jitsi, do you know what level that is? Whether it's stable or... or, or I'm what, pretty because, sure it's stable. Okay. Because I've noticed it looks a lot different than our... our uh, Omnitech.net on. I yeah, and, it's... And, and that's a good question. Uh, being open source, you know, each particular manager is free to pursue the version they want and our tweak as required. I was noticing that today, the, the landing page on uh, the public site, public uh, JIT, meet.jit, uh, public meet.jitsi.jit.si. The landing page looks totally different, but then when I brought up the Docker this afternoon, it was different than our Nix page, which is supposed to be unstable. So, so I, I think the answer is that uh, meet.jitsi, uh, the, the company that's behind it has said, hey, you know, we, we use this to test stuff out to see how well things work for our paid uh, clients. So we may try stuff and uh, what you get is what you get. Could be. Uh, also, has, has anybody ever seen the byline on the public site? And uh, I think it's on the bottom of GitHub too. Uh, there's a company called 8x8, which is a fairly sizable purveyor of VoIP products. Uh, they have some private, they have some white label products. We actually consider using them until we built our own. And, you know, they're a major revenue supporter. And since listed on the site, uh, you know, they're sponsoring it big time. Okay, the, the run was fairly painless. It only took about 30 seconds to, down, to download. For those of you who are familiar with Docker, you know, this, this is probably repetition, but if any of you, if any of you folks aren't, Basically, what was downloaded is a folder, Docker Jitsi Meet. And basically, this is all static, inf the static information for the containers, as well as the bid, the uh, information, the files to build the container environment. And the main one is right here. Docker Compose is the mainstream. You you know you can run a Docker container about any way you want, but if you want to build something that uses more than one container at the same time, but less than a full cluster, uh, Docker Compose is pretty much what you use, and it, it's basically a configuration file for building each container you need to run the application. Hey, Lee, uh, we're getting a report from someone that you're uh, a little hard to hear. Uh, can, can you either take a step closer to your mic or uh, hang on a second, let me get... turn yourself up a bit? And that goes for anyone else who's on the call here. If you're having trouble hearing or anything, a uh, point of information is more than uh, welcome. How's that? Is that better? Uh, James, how is it uh, sounding now? Cast one, two, three. Uh, 
I have had problems with the uh, uh, the microphone on Zoom. It seems to change a lot. The automatically adjust volume is pretty useless. But Nick, yeah. Sorry, James, it looks like that might be as good as we can get. Uh, uh, maybe you might want to try turning up your uh, volume. Okay, thank you. Is it okay for like you, Andrew? Can you hear okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm hearing you just fine. Uh, I, I think it's okay. And James says, go ahead. He can hear it. Uh, he, he can live with it. So sorry for the interruption. No problem. Uh, anyway, this is what we'll use here in a few minutes to uh, bring up the system. And there it is. Okay. Before we proceed, let's step back a little bit and look at a overall diagram. There is the web interface, the authentication server, conference focus components, a video router, or more than one a SIP gateway, and possibly broadcasting infrastructure. They all show up in the nice diagram I hear. I snorked off the documentation. Uh, I will point out with a uh, container, I could not, I did not have time to figure out how to enable Let's Encrypt. So we'll use the uh, self-signed certificate. And also, whereas as uh, I did not have time to add the authentication users into the Prosody. But other than that, I got it running. All right, back to the build. First thing we want to do is to create a local ENB file. There's an ENV example, copy it to .env. That makes your own local copy. And then we want to generate passwords. And basically all that does is generate a bunch of passwords up here automatically for the components. So you're fairly assured to be using halfway secure passwords to communicate with the different components of the process. Okay. I also will save a .env back and it uses decent passwords. Some additional additional tweaks you want to make up front. You want to change your public URL from meet.example.com to whatever you want to use. And let's see if I can find it here. There we go, public URL. And you also want to change your Docker host address. Last address, there was a typo, Lee. Say again? Uh, in the last address that you edited, there was a typo. I think you forgot to put a dot between 172 and 217 or something. Ah, okay, it's shuttered. Yeah. And especially if you're using Docker Compose, you can probably get away with uh, using uh, the, the Docker Compose names there internally. Yeah, yeah, 
that is that is true. And let's see. That way you don't have to play that game of what, what IP address is my Docker image. <laughs> okay, here's my mkdir command from the slide. Making all your config directories under Dutch uh, just you need. One of the other things is for some reason, I don't know why, but we also need uh, the default configuration is in a user home directory. And that was kind of weird for me. So basically I changed the config to be in this, in this directory where I set it up. Okay, everybody follow that? And since I, Grew up in the BSD 3.4.3 days. My standard location, which I've used for 30 years, is slash u. If I ever build a system, you'll know it's me because there's a slash u directory on there with all of the stuff I've added. Again, it's just my personal standard. It seems to make sense, and I've been following it. Okay, at this point, we're ready to run. May I just make a comment? Sure. Uh, every time uh, one edits the .env file, that uh, folder, the .jitsi-cfg-me-cfg, uh, uh, that folder needs to be like recreated along with all the sub subfolders. Uh, otherwise, the changes in the .env uh, that you made would not like execute or would not, you know, take life or something, you know. Okay. So what what I end up doing is I rename that folder and then. Uh, you know, fire up the Docker uh, and it recreates the folder. Uh, but if the folder exists, it would not write into it, if that makes sense. With the changes. Okay. Interesting. I, I, I had never seen a problem. Okay, now I, everything's running. And let's see, where is my browser? And at this point, it's still using a self-signed certificate. Again, I was saying I didn't have time to do it at this point, but here is your conference. And I'm not gonna allow my camera and microphone to go over there. So would that take a whole 10 minutes, including explanation? Okay, questions. Uh, so as a question, uh, what sort of performance uh, requirements have you seen with this? I usually build them with four cores and uh, eight gig. Although our uh, VPS up in Chicago is four cores and four gig because that was what I got for seven bucks a month. But the one I built here locally is eight cores. And I haven't run a performance test with it yet. I don't know if the 
our new fiber connection is going to be any better than the BPS in Chicago. Uh, but since a lot of people are only supporting Zoom now anyway. This extra noise is killing me, folks. Whoever is unmuted. And well, looks like everybody's muted on the list. Uh, Lee, could it possibly be that uh, uh, the Jitsi uh, channel that you have up in your browser is being uh, someone's uh, spilling over from there? Well, I have microphone turned off on, but I can fix it up real quick. I'll close it. Well, I, I'm wondering if it was someone else's uh, mic was coming across that. I don't know. Well, we'll oh, hang on. I'm looking. Everybody, everybody's muted over there. Okay, I have no idea where it's coming from. Then I, I could hear it as well, but yeah, so could I. Steve's desktop is not muted over there, Lee. And his desktop is always noisy. It seems to have stopped. Ah, I got all of a sudden I got audio. <clears throat> Shit. Yeah, that too. All right, did I get rid of that echo? Oh, shit. And that sounded like Steve's voice. Why don't I see Steve as a participant? Well, I don't, I, I don't have a camera here. I gave that to my grandson. But I'm, I'm literally hearing everything I say a second later. And I've got all the sound equipment turned on. Are you on the Jitsi or are you on the Zoom? It says Jitsi in the upper left hand corner. Then I'd recommend you come over to a Zoom and it should be better then. Wait a minute. God. Okay, again. I see Steve is a participant now in the Zoom meeting, but why are we hearing him from the JIT side meeting then? I think he needs to close out his web browser uh, and he should be fine there. Again, I don't understand. I'm signed in on the Zoom meeting. Why am I hearing Steve if he's over on the JIT side meeting? Uh, because uh, Lee is currently sharing his screen and he has upped the Jitsi meeting. Ah, I have a here on my, so on the my screen machine. is providing sound. Right. Yep. Okay. So, Any other questions at this point? Uh, so my, my only other question, Lee, was uh, around uh, the, the bandwidth and how many people actually are on your uh, self-hosted one. Uh, on the VPS, we've had, I've had oh, uh, 18 or 19. Okay, and that's just all in one meeting? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is Stan. I've been in meetings where there were 40, 45 people. Yeah, but you're using a public server, Stan, and they have a lot. No, better. no, no, no. No. 
Uh, well, yeah, uh, I, okay, you're right. You're right. That was a public server. Yes. Yeah. You're right. Because the, uh, the use case I was looking at is I help with the uh, state science fair here, and we're going online this year. And uh, the, the public one won't be a good fit for us because in their terms and conditions, they, they immediately say you must be above the age of uh, uh, the, the legal age and we'll, we'll be cutting it close on some of the, the students to be able to meet to talk with their uh, uh, judges and stuff like that. So I was looking at standing up my own self-hosted just so we don't run afoul of terms and conditions. How many, um, how many people you, are, do you think you're going to have? Uh, so it will be multiple rooms, usually small rooms of like uh, probably three or four people in a room, but it could be uh, probably 50 or 60 rooms at a time. So it's, it's going to get painful pretty fast. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, this is Stan. I've been watching Jitsi, and currently they have a hard-coded limitation of 75 people. Although they say it could go higher, they're currently restricting everything to 75. Is that per room or per server? I, I believe it's per server. Yeah, it'd have to be per server. Oof. Yeah, I, I agree there, James. Can anybody, can you hear me? Yeah. Was that a yes, Lee? I was from, it was from here. Yeah. Okay, well, if one guy can hear, probably everybody can. Yeah, we can hear you, I think. Thank you. Oh, gee, I'm only 45 minutes late. Oh, well. So the good news is this uh, presentation is being recorded and uh, will be posted online afterwards. Cool. All right, to get this set, get this set up, up and running, my punch list is fairly short, but I could not get it done for tonight. The first one being get the uh, let's encrypt configuration figured out and or build a load balancer in front. Uh, now, Andrew, I'm wondering uh, for your situation, you know, it seems like you might want to cluster and just spin up a new meet instance for each room. That's what I was thinking of, uh, either using uh, uh, K3S or one of those things to, in order to uh, load balance across it. Right. And then that way, each each instance would be running the room with three, four, five people, however many you have, and you could theoretically host that on different hardware, you know, in, on uh, whatever your free hardware resource is. But do they have a requirement, like are kids going to multiple rooms? Would they have to log out and log in and log out and log in? Uh, no, the, the trick would be to set up the load balancer to uh, direct uh, the URL. So basically say like you, you have room one, room two, room three, room four, and the load balancer would send you to the right machine uh, for that URL. Yeah, it's the way my grandson's school is running right now. Any idea what they're using, Steve? Zoom, and uh, he's running a he's running my old Chromebook. Seems to work just fine for him. Yeah, the yeah. issue we run into with that is uh, getting enough uh, Zoom accounts to host all of the judges, and the logistics of handling that just rapidly become a nightmare. Well, this is a I mean, this is a a, a regular school system, so. Yeah, yeah, where each teacher has their their own account to host and etc. I'm I'm talking about my use case where it's a little harder to get the logistics together. Right, right. Yeah. But I know they use different rooms for different teachers, and you know I'm just I haven't been there. I'm just 
here, you know, letting you know what what I've heard. I don't. Oh, know. Yeah, yeah. And one option is to bring everybody into a room, a big room, and then have breakout rooms or stuff like that is another mm-hmm. option. Far less automated, though. Yeah. I'm not sure if Jitsi has breakout room options, though, like Zoom does. They they don't, I believe. Uh, they don't have rooms, but it'd be trivial to just to spawn a new meeting for whatever topic or room you wanted. Yeah, everything's a good. Yeah. A what? Uh, a good G U I D. It's a uh, random, unique uh, identifier of 16 bits, I believe. Oh, okay. Uh, GUIDs are bigger than that. Yeah, 16 digits. I think each one of them is a hex digit. Oh, 16 digits, maybe, but not 16 bits. Yeah. I think it's, I think they're 16 digits, Andrew. You're correct. It's a 128 uh, right. uh, bit. Anyway, uh, as I was saying before, I didn't have time to create the pros of the users. It's fairly straightforward. I looked it up in the docs. Basically, you exec into that container and then run prosody control in the container with the config you pass for the container, register my user, and password or whatever you want to create. I confirm that this works. I, I did both of these, uh, the Let's Encrypt as well as the user configuration, and it's fairly simple. I mean, it's it works just if it is described in the documentation. I didn't have any difficulty. Uh, there, I, I have seen reports that as of two months ago, some of these Not latest, but some of the main the stat, the uh, stable releases had problems with Prosody. Uh, the chap that helped me out last spring said uh, was saying that it didn't. I have not had time to check it in the container, but you know it only takes five or ten minutes to to spin it up, and it'd be fairly quick to test. And if you're running anything in production nowadays, I would think you'd want to use a container environment because, uh, you know, when we built Nix back then, it was it was just a pain in the butt to keep track keep track of all the change in the different places and different directories. But I can say for a fact that the Proso Control does work. And blow it up here for you. Now, yeah, this is our uh, VPS in, the, in, the, in Chicago. And let's see here. Yep, let me take my password off the end here. You know, this, this works in the uh, hardware hosted version. And you know it's 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 fairly trivial. Uh, what I don't know is what it's going to take to do it in the. Uh, let's see. Here's the prosody. In fact, let's try it. Um, what I, what I did was I defined the uh, the web like the what you might call it the URL that you are going to obtain the. Uh, let's encrypt certificate for in one of those uh, configuration files. I believe it's either Docker Compose or the .env. I'm, I'm not sure. Well, what what I couldn't figure out is this is the root fs for the web container. No, you 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 do it in the uh, in the container like the, that. You clone the Docker files. Like not in, you don't log into the like the container. You are outside the container and you change the one of those uh, configuration files in that folder that contains the Docker clone. If if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, this. Um, 
Yeah, see, uh, th this was a reference I couldn't figure out. Sure, but uh, no, the, can you can you scroll a little bit? Uh, I can I can try to figure out. Um, no, uh, maybe it's the can it be the dot env file? Can we take a look at that? I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. Expose uh, the reports. Public. I mean, they're, they're, here, here. Uh, go, go a little bit lower. I think. Scroll down a little bit. Enable let's encrypt. See, you, right. you got uncommented, uncomment, and then you I, just. I, I, I did all that, but it didn't work. Sure, and that is the reason why it didn't work, Lee. I think is you have to rename that dot gc dot meet dot cfg folder in the home directory that it created. Remember, you have to either rename it or delete it and then run the Docker container again, and it's going to have to recreate the whole structure, then it would work. And when the prosody first fires up as a sub container, it, uh, if there is no certificate generated, it will automatically create it. Okay, let's try it. Fingers crossed. Did you put an email and stuff like that? Because I think it was a yeah. requirement. Yeah. Okay, now it's got clean directories. By the way, if I'm, my fingers are flying too fast for anybody and you miss something, please feel free to speak up. That's the other benefit of it being recorded is uh, we can come back and hit pause. <laughs> Very true. And let's see, where is... Notice at all times, the fingers do not leave the wrist. Uh, in case anybody's on the public, se the next session, I'm going to go ahead and kill it. And go jump over to this one. Um, it is. Uh, it should be on. column, I think. And, and you need then, a colon, not the uh, the period there uh, yeah. in your last segment. Thank you. Oh, that all right. No, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not running. See, the problem I had is when I when I was trying to test it this afternoon, I just turned it on like that and it wasn't responding on any port. One one trick that I used, Lee. What is that redirect of, from 8443 to 443? Change it to 443, you mean? Yeah, try just your standard HTTPS. Huh. Mm, One trick that I used to troubleshoot was uh, I wouldn't uh, run it with the, like the Docker Compose command. I wouldn't run it with the uh, hyphen D uh, command. I, I would just run it connected, not disconnected. Then you can see the log, you know, like uh, getting the Let's Encrypt certificate and failing it or whatever. Uh, okay, hold on a second. Sure. Where's 
fail to obtain certificate from the Let's Encrypt. Did you see that? Oh, you've done it too many times. You hit the uh, rate limiter. Yes, on on the Let's okay, Encrypt. Okay, well, that, that's that's a, that's a failure because the certificate exists. The certificate is there. Well, what I what I think is it is doing is like when the um, prosody or uh, the web container, one of those containers, when it is firing up, it uh, it puts the certificate in this like dot gc dot meet dot cfg folder somewhere in there, and if it doesn't exist, it will obtain it again. So because we renamed it, you know, maybe it did try to obtain it a few times and so you know became too many attempts or something that that no, is my no, no, that, uh, that that's not the issue the issue is i created a certificate to start with a week or four, five or six days ago and is not seeing that certificate to use it's trying to build one itself uh in my understanding is this the whole Docker uh, uh, container is created to obtain a certificate on its own. Because I did not obtain a certificate manually like you did, Lee. Uh, and I let the Docker obtain that certificate for me, and it, it does obtain a certificate. Right, but where does, it, where does it save it? It has to save it in a static location. Yeah, it, it is. I believe it is in that uh, the, the config folder tree that we renamed or removed or whatever. Somewhere there. I don't know where it is, honestly. See, there's a, yeah. Maybe. Ah, maybe. Okay. All right. So that's what we want, right? In theory. In theory. And uh, for me, uh, when the certificate is uh, about to expire, uh, the container is so smart that it would like renew the certificate. You know, I don't manually do anything personally, so it does it for me. Well, yeah, I mean, I've got 50 other servers. I just put a search pot renew at the, top, at the head. All right, go. Starting service done. It looks like it might have grabbed it. Not seeing the error that was there before. Bingo. Well done. Yeah. Thanks for the thanks for the help. Yeah, yeah, no problem. All right, so we got uh, let's encrypt configured properly. Uh, and then uh, getting the account uh, is just like they describe. You log into the, the container, right. create a bash, you know, like window there, and then you run that command. And, uh, and you okay. can de define who, like in that dot env uh, file, dot env file, who can create a room and who cannot and stuff like that. So some account holders would have that privilege and some will not. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, and that's where it stores the configuration. Okay. Because there's the config. I love it. I love when it plans together. Plan comes together. Okay. Any other questions at this point? A few final notes here. 
48,000 is plain HTTP, which is, you know, which is where you would point your load balancer. Uh, if you, if you don't want to use HTTP for WebRTC because that can cause some weird errors like fail to access your microphone, cannot use, etc. If you want to use Jugasi, you can use the file jugasi.yaml and add it along with your Docker Compose when you build it. I have not tried that. Some other options, if you want to use document sharing via Etherpad, just add etherpad.yaml. If you want to use Jabiri, you first configure a host as described in Jitsi Broadcasting Infrastructure Configuration section and then add it to your Docker build sequence. All right, uh, I talked to, I mentioned Chromium before. Uh, I will tell you from experience, when you're sharing an audio stream, share it, open the window or, or Chromium tab, which is the simplest way to do it. Like I've got one uh, recurring meeting. I open a Chromium session, set up the four or five tabs I need with videos or documents or pictures that I want to share. And then I can just share, share them in sequence, one, two, three, four. When you want to share an audio stream, though, share it, stop, and restart to make sure that the audio stream is working. Because there seems to be uh, issues with starting the sharing process. Cool. That's about it. And I uh, appreciate the hint. Uh, I got the Let's Encrypt stuff figured out. ProCD probably wouldn't be too much far, too much further behind. And Andrew, my suggestion for you would be to go, you know, grab a quick VPS with like uh, eight cores and at least eight gig or maybe 16 gig. And just, you know, spool up a Docker config and, you know, keep your, keep your work uh, stuffed off in a repository somewhere. You can spin it up for a few days and test it and see if it works. If not, throw it away. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking is a moderately beefy uh, VPS with a huge chunk of RAM on board and uh, just sort of, I, I like the idea of one room, one, uh, one container and just do a load balancer in front of it to get it all sorted out. Right. Uh, and I, I can, I have been using Chicago VPS. Uh, that's where I got my uh, four core, four gig, hundred gig of storage for seven bucks a month. Although it's a little bit more expensive now, but they still got a discount. I think the next one was eight core, 16 gig, but just do a quick search, a uh, quick Google search for whoever's got the cheapest thing right now. And you can play with that for a little bit until you get your config worked out and then move to, move to someplace permanent or for the time that you need it. And the good news is that uh, they, this particular uh, use case, they, they do have a budget because since they're not having to pay for in-person rental of a uh, uh, stadium, mm -hmm. uh, they, we're, we're uh, in a lot better state than uh, they normally are. Oh, cool. That'd, that'd be fun. You know, spin up your cluster somewhere and, you know, get 40 or 50, you know, get... 20 or 30 small, you know, uh, you know, spool up some different containers to do it. That'd be interesting. Yeah, it's it's been an interesting year uh, all around with the, uh, uh, we, we just decided that we were going to completely go online because by March, odds are we're probably not going to be um, allowed to meet in person yet. Oh yeah, because of, you know, even if the virus is out, it's not going to be to the public by then. It's just they're still going to be in first responders and medical staff. Yeah, the the uh, the the fact of bringing uh, school districts from across the the state of Iowa all together into one spot, uh, risk management took one look at it and said, "No, yeah. 
you're, you're you, you can't do that. Very true. Well, speaking of that, Andy, I was just I just drove past the the uh, community choice slash well up there. They had school buses from Timpton, Prairie Valley, and several other school districts all meeting up there for something physically. I don't know what that's going on, but I was shocked. Yeah, uh, the, the, the issue was, uh, it was uh, uh, a uh, local university's risk management was telling us uh, that it probably was a bad idea. So it wasn't necessarily one of the, the state bodies. It was more... Uh, uh, local than that. I just happened to see that driving in here uh, just, you know, just minutes ago. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure what, what would be going on down there because uh, uh, football is... I, I mean, I was yeah. totally shocked. It's like, hold, there's all this announcement from the governor and all this stuff, and now they're bringing all the school district people in. By the way, Lee uh, Lambert, thank you for again for doing what you were showing there. Oh, my, my pleasure. I uh, this is a lot more fun for me than you because I got to uh, put all this stuff together and make it work, except for the last yeah. lesson trip piece. Lee, for those who aren't uh, familiar with you and your, your company, uh, if you want to put in a plug uh, of uh, who you are and what you do, uh, just as introduction. Uh, uh, basically, uh, I started Omnitech almost 40 years ago. And we've been doing, uh, you know, special applications. Uh, uh, the first uh, mix I used was BSD back in the night in the '80s. Then the first uh, Linux was Linux Pro, which was one of the first uh, commercial versions out of Denver, I think. And then about 15 years ago, I gravitated over to SUSE because I started teaching classes and. Uh, they had some significant advantages. I thought they were a little bit better engineered than other, other distros, but I mean, that's that's a debatable point and I'm open-minded. Uh, but you know, today we do uh, nothing but open source. In fact, uh, the only thing, the only OS I have on hardware in the shop is some flavor of Linux, whether it's Debian or SUSE. Well, cool, thank you for the presentation. My pleasure. Thank you, Lee.